everyone, Neuralard here, and today I'm going to do a review of the Ames Power Corporation 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, model number PWRI1512S. And I'm going to do this in a little bit different format than usual, because this is going to be a shootout between two supposedly similar inverters. This one and the OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt inverter. Now, I done a review on this earlier, you can go ahead and check that one out, but today we're going to compare these two products to see how they really match up against each other. And that's the format I'm going to use for this review. Now, inverters are not fungible and they are not commodities. A lot of other products out there, for example, extension cords, if you buy a 25 foot extension cord, it extends 25 feet, at the gauge it's rated for, and you pretty much know what you're getting. Now, there's certainly quality differences in extension cords. These are not commodities either, nothing really is. But you pretty well know what you're getting. With inverters, that's not the case. You never really know what you're getting. A lot of people purchase these products based on either uh, maybe they like the way they look, or usually it's, it's a couple different ways. One, you're either going to buy the least expensive product with the biggest number on the box, that is usually a bad idea. Or they purchase a brand name that they recognize and or trust. And I've done reviews of Cobra products and of Whistler. Those are two of the bigger names in inverters. And I have not been impressed. So that too isn't a great way to select a product. So how does a person select an inverter? Well, you can go to YouTube and watch my videos, but I certainly haven't looked at every single one and I don't really have all that great an answer for you. But today we're going to be taking a look at the Ames Power Corporation 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And we'll see how this one stacks up to a different inverter. We'll start by taking a look at the box. The inverter seems packaged well enough in this box. should be protected from damage adequately. And the only place it really says pure sine wave is right up here. It's not anywhere else in the description, which is somewhat interesting. They do mention surge power 3000 watts. I'm sure that's going to be false, but we'll test it. I looked at their 2000 watt model a few, uh, a few months ago. I think there's a video out there on it. I don't remember exactly. But uh, that inverter did not perform well. So we'll see how the 1500 watt version performs. And this is really the only information that they have on the box. Not a whole lot in it. So let's move on to the user manual. And after paying $400 for a product, this is the user manual they give you. It seems cheap, and that's going to be a running theme with this product. Cheap. Uh, now, this is by an American company. It, if, if you go to their website, Ames Power Corporation, there is a kind of a story in there about the origins of this company. Some guy apparently in Arizona started this in his garage, and aww, got to be a good company then, right? Well, yeah, I don't care where you started it. I just care about your products and how good a value they are. These are made in China now, so they certainly aren't U.S. made. But if you go to the last page, they have specifications. And, I mean, what is this? They just put a sticker over the ratings and changed them. I guess they used to be something else, and instead of reprinting the manual, they had somebody put stickers on them? I mean, how cheap is that, right? You hold it up to a light and you can kind of see what uh, what it used to be behind here. Uh, I'm not going to say what it used to be because it's pretty irrelevant, but um, yeah, that's, that's not that impressive. I'm not actually going to test these voltage ratings because that's boring and I don't have the proper equipment to do it easily. Uh, I've done it before, but it's just not easy, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, but uh, the other thing I want to mention about this manual is that it is good English. An English speaker actually wrote this, and that's appreciated. So, no major complaints about it, but it does feel kind of cheap. Let's take a look at the actual product now. Here on my table, I have both inverters that we're going to be comparing today, side by side. OSP Tiger Claw, 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Ames Power Corporation, 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. They should be similar, right? Well, we're going to find out here. But first, let's take a look a little closer up at this inverter and compare it to this one. Here's the output side of the Ames Power Corporation inverter. 
and once again, it looks very cheap. This little LED readout here is very, very cheap. It has a front cover that's peeling off because it's just a sticker on there. Red and green LED, power switch, a couple of outlets, and if you plug things into them, you'll find that they are very cheap quality. You have this grounding lug that is just embarrassing. Um, stamped steel plate on the output. Not overly impressed. There is a USB jack. That's nice. I don't know if it works. I didn't test it. And this is the output side of the Tiger Claw. And to me, this is a lot more aesthetically pleasing, and it doesn't scream cheap. So I prefer this, but it's a matter of preference. These outlets are also better quality. The actual case of the two, I like the design of the Tiger Claw better. That's a matter of preference. I think they're both acceptable, though. They are extruded anodized aluminum cases with a stamped steel bottom. This one is extruded anodized aluminum with an anodized aluminum bottom, which maybe puts it a little bit a leg up on the other one, but uh, again, that's kind of a matter of preference. It's not a big deal either way, I don't think. If we go to the input side, and I already have these connected up. I'm sorry if it's a little dark here, but uh, the OSP Tiger Claw has triple cooling fans. They are load controlled. And there is a nice ground lug, very usable. I like that. The Ames Power Corporation, once again, I already have cables on it, has two cooling fans, and they have these lugs. Now, I'm glad that they used these ring terminal style lugs. I like those much better than the torpedo ones. Again, that's a matter of preference. That's just my preference. But either way, I think either of these products is acceptable. And if you want to see a size comparison. This is my hand and the inverter, but perhaps this is a little bit better. This is a standard D-sized Magdalite, just to give you an idea of the size of the inverter. I should also mention that the Ames inverter comes with a remote control, which is kind of nice. It would be even nicer if it worked, but it doesn't work. Now, I did get this inverter used, and I'll tell you more about that later, but uh, apparently the remote doesn't work. I didn't look into why, but it's uh, probably just not very reliable. Uh, it is nice, though, that it does come with a remote control. However, this particular remote control only costs you a few dollars. You can buy them in bulk on eBay for very, very cheap. It's a very cheap remote. I'm not impressed. It has a cover, but you still push the buttons if you squeeze the cover, so what's the point of the cover? It's just very cheap. Once again, that's going to be a running theme of this inverter. Cheap. Now, the OSP Tiger Claw does not have a remote. However, I installed a good quality remote. And uh, I made a video on doing that to the OSP Tiger Claw. This has a at least a 50 foot range. I haven't tested it past that. Works really well. And it now has a remote. So that's no longer a benefit of the Ames Power Corporation inverter. However, it did not come with this from the factory. so keep that in mind. Now usually I open up the products and show you what's inside and give you my impressions. I'm not going to do this th that this time uh, simply because I've already had it open and I've repaired it and I don't feel like opening it again. But I will give you my general impressions. You can watch the video on the OSP Tiger Claw. The construction quality is pretty reasonable. There wasn't a lot to complain about in there given the price point. The Ames Power Corporation inverter, however, has a much higher price point. It's supposedly a better name brand because who is this? I don't think anybody really knows. But the quality inside is poor. Now, I'm not going to give you all the details of what I saw in here because it looks like it was made in somebody's garage. It's uh, pretty sad, and if I went over all of the problems that I saw in here, it would take me this entire video and you probably don't want to listen to me complain about this product for an entire video so we'll just ignore what's inside this box and call it a magic black box and see how it really performs but it's not going to be reliable the construction quality is extremely poor now when I got this inverter it was broken and that's not a surprise because these inverters often do break because they the quality isn't that good uh, you can go online and read other reviews on them I agree with those reviews. They're not going to last very long because they're just not made well. But in this case, there was a large inductor inside, a big choke about this size, that was not glued down to the board at all. 
I'm sure it should have been. It just failed to do that in the construction of it. And it broke loose, wobbled around inside the case, and broke a bunch of other stuff. So I replaced all of those things, put it back together, and now it works just like it did when it was new. Except the remote doesn't work. I didn't find that out until I had it all back together. So this will operate just like it was when it's new. And instead of going over all of my complaints about it, I'll tell you the things that I do like. The heat sinking. I really like the way that they heat sink this. So they have all of the components on top, and they're all bolted to an extruded aluminum heat sink that runs the entire length of this. And it's quite heavy, it's quite thick, and a very good heat sink. The fans on this side of it over here blow over all of the components on the top of the board, and also through those heat sink fins on the underside and it cools very very well. I really like that design. That part is done very well. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a lot more good to say about it, so I will move on. Let's mention the fan noise. Now these fans don't turn on very often. They only turn on when the inverter gets hot and it takes a long time for this inverter to warm up because of that massive heatsink. And even at full load, I've tested it, and they cycle on and off. They don't stay on continuously. So this inverter cools very, very well. That is a good thing. The OSP Tiger Claw has load and temperature controlled fans, which is good. However, they're quite a bit louder. Uh, these fans are reasonably quiet, and if you want a quiet inverter, this could be a good choice. Uh, I can turn on the fans on this one because when you turn it on, the fans turn on for a few seconds, and you can hear how loud it is. I'm not sure how well it comes through on camera, but it is fairly loud. So that could be one negative of this, but they only turn on full speed when it's really needed, when you're under a heavy load, so that may not be a problem. Either way, I think in terms of audible noise, both of these are acceptable, but the edge goes to the Ames Power Corporation inverter. So, a quick review of what we have so far. The construction quality, OSP Tiger Claw is better. The case design, I like this one better because this one screams cheap, but either one's probably okay, so I'm just going to be generous and call it a tie. In terms of heat sinking, this inverter has better heat sinking. For a remote control, the Ames Power Corporation wins there because this one doesn't come with it from the factory. You can add it later, however. This one has a USB port. That one doesn't. I certainly don't care, but somebody else might. And for fan noise, the Ames Power Inverter wins once again. So, so far, I have to say that this inverter is winning handily. But let's continue and look at some other aspects.